Hi, my name's Tom Owens and I'm a PhD student from the Neurovascular Research Laboratory on the Upper Glintap campus. My PhD focuses on how concussion affects brain function in rugby union players across the lifespan. And I'd like to share some of the recent research that we've completed. So to help set the scene, a concussion is a form of traumatic brain injury, and these are caused by biomechanical forces. And they're typically accompanied by several short lasting symptoms, including headache, dizziness, blurred vision, and even amnesia. While these symptoms are commonly short lasting, anywhere between seven to 10 days, the longer term implications associated with concussion are now becoming apparent. As retired contact sport athletes with three or more previous concussions are five times more likely to develop a form of mild cognitive impairment, which sees a reduction in neurological function during day to day life. Unfortunately, these people have a 10 to 20% chance to go on and develop neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, where the brain undergoes atrophy, meaning a loss of brain volume and therefore function. We know concussion is associated with mild cognitive impairment. And this increases someone's likelihood of developing dementia or chronic traumatic encephalopathy. However, the mechanisms that underpin this trajectory remain to be established. Where does our research fit in then? Well, concussion in rugby union has generated significant and widespread media concern regarding the high incidence of injury reported. Our research aimed to determine the lifelong consequences of recurrent concussion across the lifespan of these rugby union players. We hypothesise that concussion history would be associated with an increased susceptibility to a decline in cognition. And this would be due to something called oxidative nitrosative stress, changes within our blood that then go on to affect cerebrovascular function and therefore cognitive ability. We started by comparing 20 professional rugby union players in their mid 20s with a concussion history of over three and compared these to a non-concussed, non-contact sport playing control group. As we were interested to see the lifelong consequences, we also recruited 20 retired rugby union players in their mid 60s who also had three or more previous concussions and compared these with an age match control group that were free of concussion history or uh, contact sports. All groups were matched for education status as well to rule out any confounding variables associated with cognitive ability. We were interested in the player's blood to begin with. Specifically, we wanted to determine oxidative stress, molecules within the blood associated with a negative impact on how well our blood vessels can function. And similarly, we also wanted to determine nitric oxide bioactivity, a molecule that helps uh, maintain or govern vascular function or blood vessel function. We also wanted to determine middle cerebral artery velocity, i.e. how quickly blood travels to the brain through the middle cerebral artery via ultrasound. And we performed this under rest, hypercapnia, which increases cerebral blood flow, and hypocapnia, which decreases cerebral blood flow. And this enables us to determine cerebrovascular reactivity, an index of how well our blood vessels respond to changes in carbon dioxide. We also performed several cognitive assessments speci specific to domains of the brain. We performed several assessments, including attention, coordination, memory, information processing, and even visuospatial capacity. What about our results then? Well, to start with the molecular, we used the ascorbic free radical as a measurement of oxidative stress. As hypothesized, young players had an elevated concentration of, uh, of ascorbic free radical. However, this was not shown in the aged players. Similarly, we had young players characterized by a reduction in nitric oxide bioavailability. And this was also true for the aged players as hypothesized. Overall, 
our results showed that young players were characterized by elevated oxidative nitrosative stress. However, aged players only had a decrease in nitric oxide bioactivity in the absence of elevated oxidative stress. What about cerebrovascular function? Well, when we compared the young controls and the aged controls, aging was associated with a 15% reduction in blood flow, which is in line with the current literature. When we compared the young controls and aged players, we saw a reduction in blood flow by 31%. Therefore, players have an accelerated decline in resting cerebral perfusion, which is associated with concussion history. And this was also true of cerebrovascular reactivity. In terms of cognition, we used the Montreal Cognitive Assessment as a measure and as an assessment of mild cognitive impairment. And as hypothesized, young players were outperformed by the young control group. And the same was true of the aged players, whereby they were characterized by mild cognitive impairment. Staggeringly, young players performed identically to the aged controls uh, as well, who were some 40 years their senior on average. And the similarities continued with memory and learning, whereby young players were outperformed by the young, uh, the young controls. And similarly, for hand-eye coordination using the Groove Pegboard Assessment, the young players were outperformed by the young controls, and the same was true for the aged players. However, again, we saw that young players are already performing worse in this assessment compared to the non-concussed aged controls. And the brain regions associated with cognitive dysfunction for young players were typically the frontal temporal lobes, i.e. the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain, where aged players only show deficits in the frontal regions based on the domains that were shown. So how how do we bring these findings together? Well, concussion increases mitochondrial metabolism and the mitochondria are associated with recovery following injury. And that's because they produce energy in the form of ATP to facilitate that process. Unfortunately, they also increase the concentration of free radicals, which also contribute to oxidative stress. This has a negative impact on our blood vessels. And one of the free radicals that we're going to discuss is superoxide. And you'll notice it has an unpaired electron, which is free to interact with other molecules within our blood. One of those molecules includes nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, as mentioned earlier, helps govern vascular function, i.e. how well our blood vessels perform. Unfortunately, nitric oxide can be scavenged by superoxide to form peroxide nitrite, which reduces the overall concentration of nitric oxide and lowers blood vessel function as a result. What we then see is a reduction in blood vessel function and the concentration of oxygen that can be transported in these blood vessels. When this translates to the brain, we see a reduction in oxygen delivery which then begins to starve neurons, the network that send and transmit signals throughout the brain and to the rest of our body, therefore lowering cognitive ability. What about aging then? Well, retired rugby players weren't characterized by elevated oxidative stress, but the reduction in nitric oxide is still important as it lowered blood vessel function and therefore contributed to mitochondrial dysfunction, which is a long-term effect of concussion history. This is negative in the sense that ATP, the energy that helps recover within the cerebrovascular system is lowered and therefore cannot sustain an adequate neur uh, neuronal network. However, it does decrease free radical concentration. However, the large, largely negative impact of this is that we get a reduction in neuronal network integrity and therefore degeneration of these neurons. As a result, we see cognitive impairment and this would also characterize players and increase their susceptibility to neurodegenerative diseases. 
I hope you've enjoyed today's talk. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about our research, I'd encourage you to watch the documentary Rugby Union, The Invisible Injury, which I helped film with Adam Hughes, a former uh, Newport Gwent Dragons rugby player who had to uh, retire as a result of concussion history. Thanks very much for listening to today's talk and I'd welcome any of your questions.